So I guess I'd become what they wanted me to be. A killer. Some rent -a clown with a gun who puts holes in other bad guys. Well, that's what they had paid for, so in the end, that's what they got. Say what you want about Americans, but we understand capitalism. You buy yourself a product and you get what you pay for. And these chumps had paid for some angry gringo without the sensibilities to know right from wrong. Here I was, about to execute this poor bastard like some dime store angel of death. And I realized they were correct. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. A couple of days later, it was back to work, ferrying the boss's broad and his dipshit of a brother out for the night so they could recover from their brush with mortality. Then again, what did I expect? These were the kind of people who went to nightclubs in helicopters. This kind of place made me want to puke. I needed a real drink to deal with the electronic music and the robotic people. What do you do about life? Look at me, I'm standing in a nightclub, listening to music I can't stand. I'm 5,000 miles from home, I'm armed and I'm drinking. You don't want to listen to advice from me, amigo. Thank God he had left. A minute more of his drivel and I would have had to put a bullet in him myself. It soon turned out I wasn't the only one. The doors had been chained shut. I didn't need my Portuguese for Beginner's phrase book to work out what was going on. There had to be another way out through the VIP lounge. Rich fools love a private exit. It looked loud and expensive enough to be Fabiana's. Her fashion sense didn't leave a whole lot of room for imagination, let alone food. Whatever the hell they were arguing about, it was time for me to add my two cents. I knew this was gonna be a bad idea, but in the continued absence of any good ones, I decided to go with it. These guys weren't messing around. This place was like Baghdad with G-strings. A couple of more seconds and I'd have given some poor street cleaner a crappy start to his day. There was a goddamn army of these goons. Clearly somebody wanted these girls bad. Or maybe they just assumed the Bronco security team consisted of more than a drunk American has-been and a Brazilian never was who should have paid more attention in flying school. And if Fabiana wasn't dead already, I was guessing pretty soon she'd start wishing she was. I was up for one god-awful performance review. This was a mess. Where the hell was Passos? We were two failed cops failing miserably at being bodyguards. He approached everything with about as little preparation as I did. Maybe that's why we got along. My weakness was the drink. Passos was the sister. Things were turning pretty ugly in this town. The boss's girl was gone, and part of me wished I was too. I'd been shot more times than I could remember, but this felt different. Maybe fate was sending me a message, trying to tell me my luck was finally about to run out. Or maybe I'd just severed an artery and was bleeding out like any number of fools who got shot playing with guns. Either way. I was failing fast. So this was it. My easy retirement money. My blood-stained 401k. A chance to drink for free while chaperoning socialites around town and making sure the poor people didn't get too close. The brochure sure didn't mention any of this shit. More trophies and game plans. It had been a very long time since I'd had one of either. I might have written the book on dumb ideas, but Passos sure wasn't afraid to quote from it. I had a hole in my second favorite drinking arm, and the only way we were likely to get Fabiana back now was in installments. Whoever our uninvited guests were, I was about done playing soldiers. Looking back, it was strange how the cops never showed up, but things had a habit of only making sense to me, looking back long after I'd run out of time to fix them. Sure, trouble finds us the same way you found me, slumped in a bar, drunk on self-pity. I'd been sitting at the bar for three hours, or about five years, depending on how you looked at things. I tried not to look at things. I tried not to think about when it was that my existence became less about the things that make up people's lives and more about the holes that losing those things leave behind. 
but I wasn't doing a very good job at it. Where the fuck are your donuts? <laughs> this kid had a well-developed sense of humor for New Jersey. <laughs> oh, shit! I don't know why I did it. I guess I never liked seeing girls get hit. But from that moment, I was dead in that town. The bar held a lot of memories for me. Most of them fuzzy, but memories nonetheless. This looked like goodbye. I ain't waiting to see who else shows up. Come on. I thought about saying the cops, but this was no time for bad jokes. I can get you work, Max. Work that only a guy like you can do. Can you give me work sitting in a bar feeling sorry for myself? Where do I sign up? When had I ever needed to invite trouble in? It always found me, no matter where I hid. I guess I thought if I was going to be shot in the face in here, it would probably be me pulling the trigger. I'm fine with the leather. This don't show the blood so much. I'm serious. By the time they grabbed the girls, I was half cut. I ain't slipping, man. I'm slipped. I'm a bad joke. So that was it, was it? Say the magic word and be absolved of your sins. If only shit were that simple, I'd have done it years ago. Me, I'd been stuck in the past so long, I'd forgotten what year it was. Here I was, some hopped up gringo a long way from home, making trouble the only way I knew. As the weather worsened, I caught a glimpse of the rusted shells of previous lives that had been lived out here in this swampy shithole, and I wondered if I would end up the same way, or what would happen to that girl I was supposed to protect. I had no idea what lay ahead, and as much as part of me would rather be anywhere else, I knew this was where I had to be. They'd been making a reality show starring Sao Paulo's favorite housewife. Probably thought it would grease the wheels with the ransom money, but it only made me want to shove the cash down their throats. I was in a cocaine factory, but I'd stick to the depressants. The coke in the air wasn't doing anything to sharpen my thinking. Was there a switch in that room? I opened the door to the next circle of this low-rent hell. I prefer to mix these with alcohol. But on this special occasion, I'd make an exception. There they were. I had the feeling I'd been running one step behind ever since I got to this country. And maybe a few years before that as well. Fuck off with the fucking wisecracks. Really, I'm not in the mood. I had so many plans, Max. Didn't we all? The real security guards had been run off, paid off, or bumped off. That left us. It wasn't a fantastically comforting thought. Are we dead? No such luck. We gotta go. Crotcha Prado, the black badge. Right-wing paramilitary chumps protecting whoever paid the most. I guess that made them more like me than I cared to admit. Hmm, graduation shots of Rodrigo, Victor, and Marcelo, educated at rich kid finishing schools all over Europe. No wonder they had the common touch. Poor girl was dead. Shot through the head by some hero fighting the rich one lonely secretary at a time. I didn't know what the hell I was gonna find up there, but I sensed it wasn't gonna be a stripper bursting out of a cake. I knew there was another way in upstairs for the helipad. The little luxury runaround that kept the rich looking down on the poor literally as well as metaphorically. Look at me. I've been contracted to protect two people. One was being held in some hole. The other was sitting at his desk with a bullet in his head. And the company that had its logo on my paycheck was melting on top of my head. So much for a lazy Sunday afternoon. My next trick would be a high wire act with a fiery pit for a safety net. It was nice that no one was shooting at me for a change, but I'd take shot in the head over a slow roast on a spit any day of the goddamn week. I felt like a fool. I was a sweaty, gray-haired mess. This place was gonna kill me, too. I decided that I was gonna die sober, not drunk. Ah! At least then I would see who shot me. It was 
was time to take back control from whoever was out to get me. And if I didn't flush them out, at least my midlife crisis would confuse them enough so they did something stupid. I knew I wasn't thinking straight. I'd been drinking and popping painkillers for years. I had a liver like a French goose and skin like red leather. It wasn't perfect. In fact, it wasn't much good at all, but it was gonna have to do. At least I was facing in the right direction. I was a day off the sauce for the first time in years and knew I was due a hangover sent direct from Mother Nature. The way I see it, there's two types of people. Those who spend their lives trying to build a future and those who spend their lives trying to rebuild the past. For too long, I've been stuck in between. Hidden in the dark. What was I really doing walking in there with my bad haircut and ridiculous shirt? Was I there to make something right? Or was I just using a messed up situation to indulge myself? Grasping at some desperate delusion of control. Maybe the two went hand in hand more than I cared to admit. I felt dumb and exposed. I missed the booze. Not that it mattered, sober or drunk, I was hardly undercover. I stood out in this place like a streetwalker in a monastery. First day off the sauce and somehow I'd still ended up in the gutter. If there was one thing I'd learned since I'd been here, it was that Brazilians came out of the womb kicking a ball. And for kids like these, was there one legal chance at a ticket out of here? Well, they weren't gonna help me. And who could blame them? I was a dumb American in a place where dumb Americans were less popular than the clap. It looked like there was a bar up ahead. The irony was not lost on me. I figured sobriety was no use to me dead. When you're stuck in a foreign country and you don't know the words for reverse charges and you're in some lonely skin joint in the middle of some poor slum having just had every last cent robbed from you and you call yourself a bodyguard, then you know you're a loser. No comprende, leave me alone. Are you? I'll tell you what I got. I got a gun and if anybody thinks they're gonna take it from me, they'd be dead wrong. It was Monday afternoon, and I'd already been thrown out of a party, gone to a strip club, and got into a bar fight. This latest midlife crisis was certainly ticking all the boxes. The fireworks display was clearly in my honor, making sure everyone knew to roll out the red carpet for their surprise guest. I was walking into another not-so-welcome party. I was getting nowhere fast. The cold turkey was messing with me, like I was looking through another man's eyes. I needed to focus. I was trying to decide whether to crash this party or turn back, when my natural grace and finesse made the decision for me. Giovanna, charity worker and socialite. Work with the poor and play with the rich. You try to live in two worlds, eventually you're gonna get your life ripped apart. Here I was again, with all hell breaking loose around me standing over another dead girl I had been trying to protect. I'll give you a minute, buddy. We'd only been married a short time. By now, she'd been dead longer than I knew her. I still hadn't really forgiven myself for the Mona business, but I knew that was just grief. The insanity that comes with losing the life you had built. Michelle, I missed her with every part of my being. I hated the world for not killing me with her, and I hated myself for allowing this to happen to her and our little girl. But I knew I had to leave town. Excuse me, Max Payne? Somehow, I didn't think he was about to tell me I'd won the lottery. I knew I shouldn't have gone there, and that Passos might have to pay the price for my sentimentality. I started to wonder if my luck was about to run out when I realized it had a long time ago. That's why I was here. I'm down. Some Get poor down. bastard, quite literally, on the graveyard shift. Must have been wondering why there were suddenly more bodies above ground than below. <laughs> I have to admit, I almost felt bad for the guy. Dink. Sure, he had lived a bad life, but I, of all people, knew that living with this grief would be payment enough for any sins. Still, perhaps not so bad that I was prepared to dig my own grave and let these goombas kill me without even getting some dirt on their hands. I didn't want to tell the guy there were 45 other bodies in the cemetery that weren't receiving their Christian rites. I figured the Grave Digger Act would buy us some time. 
Here I was again, halfway down the world, and still looking at the bodies of women I was supposed to protect. Only difference now is, I didn't understand the language. I'd been given enough chances to make this right, and again I'd blown it. Perhaps this was my punishment from the fates. Keep reliving the same mistakes for all eternity. My body ached and my eyes burned. I needed something to straighten me out. The cops didn't seem too concerned with meeting their arrest quotas. The place was swarming with cops. They weren't there for me, as far as I could tell. And I'd blundered my way into enough clusterfucks for one day. I'd already lost the ransom money, got the hostage killed, and I was only just getting started. This was turning into another fine example of private security work. I was still alive, and still not all that happy about it. Why did the easy way out never come? Maybe I thought I didn't deserve it. Man, I was guessing these guys didn't spend their spare time studying the Geneva Convention. Yes, this was definitely them. Jesus Christ, these bastards made the NYPD look like the Harry Krishnas. I couldn't make much sense of what I was seeing, but I had the feeling it wasn't that strange for anyone else. They were bussing them out by the dozen. But who was I to cast judgment on proper police procedure and justifiable use of force? I'd gone from out of luck to unarmed and shit out of luck. Another reminder, not that I needed one, that any low point can always go lower. I decided I might as well follow them. I was lost and they were going somewhere. And it was the closest I was gonna get to a plan. After a couple of hours of lying in shit, you learn to appreciate what you've got. That kind of pain follows you around forever. The constant shadow of a wasted life. When half the local police force and a crew of paramilitary psychopaths wanna send you upstairs, I reasoned the crowd was as good a place as any, at least when we got shot. Maybe some kind soul would take a video and put it on the internet. A barely recovering alcoholic and an unarmed pregnant woman, we were hardly a SEAL team. Our day had started with us hiding in filth and got progressively worse. My luck was running true to form, or rather, I was running true to form. It certainly wasn't the first time I'd woken up with a hangover, long after a party had turned sour. I should have jumped in that goddamn canal myself and swum my way back to New York. I wasn't too excited about the acoustics in this place. A couple of gunshots would sound like I'd walked in here with a goddamn marching band. It was the question I kept on asking myself. How could I have been so blind? I was the stooge. The bad joke everybody got but me. The Imperial Palace Hotel was a five-star bona fide shithole. I needed to find out why guests were checking in by the busload and checking out by the bag load. Maybe the service would be better upstairs. When you've lived the kind of life I've lived, reality comes at you through a different lens. I had no choice but to push on. I didn't understand everything, and I never would, but I understood enough. Sometimes a complicated problem is best tackled with a simple solution. There it was, the soundtrack to my life. And, for a few seconds, came harmony. Finally. It's all right, it's done. But hey, I'm having myself a fun old time. Maybe this is how things had to be. Figure I might as well die in the sunshine as die in the snow. Well, wasn't this nice. The perfect end to a perfect trip. If someone had told me six months ago this was where my life was headed, I'd have ordered a double of whatever they were drinking. Drunk it, then blown my head off. Another dark, rainy night. Another police station. Another futile crusade for amends. Time moves forward. And nothing changes. Police food. The same crap the world over but I could reminisce about the old days later. For now, there were more pressing matters to deal with. 
If there was one thing I learned since being in Sao Paulo, it was that me and the local elevators were not a good mix. I'd killed more cops than cholesterol and still no sign of Becker. It wasn't the first time it dawned on me I should probably have gone over the plan in more detail, but it was too late for that now. I still didn't know how I'd gone from drinking myself numb in New Jersey to looting corpses in Brazil. But this was where I was, 5,000 miles from a home I couldn't go back to on another suicide mission to clean up a mess that wasn't even mine. Fame at last. It was no great surprise I'd made Ufe's most wanted list. I hadn't done much to improve the reputation of Americans abroad over the past few weeks. And there they were, my illustrious employers, three dead and still every chance I'd go four for four. None of this was gonna look good on the resume. My eyes and throat burned, but at least I could breathe. I was trying to work out what direction I was headed in when I discovered some more Brazilian architecture not designed for the American physique. Another pile of bodies and still nothing to show for it. It felt like I was detaching, that maybe this was revenge for something else, something buried deep in the past. Like so many times before, I'd found myself alone, locked on a course of destruction. It was at my worst when I was at my best. It felt like I was going around in circles, getting further away from the truth. I had to find my way out of there. Something funny about dying? <laughs> I felt like the avenging angel. I looked like a fat, bald dude with a bad temper. You disgusting piece of shit! So, of course, I knew they were looking for me. But the airport was about the only place a fat gringo might blend in. Well, there or a sex club. My delusions of disguise lasted around two seconds. They were out in force. And they were out for me. But then, I was out for them too. Every last one of those bastards. Now that I made it, check in. It felt like my vacation was coming to an end. Only I wasn't heading home with a sunburn, a bag full of duty free, and a dose of VD. I was making a bet that would put me in handcuffs or a body bag. There were Ufe all over the airport, and civilians were being moved out. Looking at it one way, shutting down the airport for their escape was a weird sort of compliment but one I didn't need. I'd rather not be blown up today. trams were running again. Maybe they'd take me to my gate. Maybe they'd bring more guys wanting to whack me. Maybe both. It was perfect. Everyone wanted a ticket for the Max Payne Express. The smart move would have been sticking with De Silva and going straight to the hangar. But when was I ever about smart moves? I'm a dumb move guy. Hey Max, we'll drive onto the runway. No thanks. Let me walk in the main entrance. I'll put a big shit-eating grin on my face and let these assholes take turns trying to kill me. That's my style, and it's too late in the day to hope for change. Boy, were they throwing numbers at this problem. But then, I'd chosen to be here. I wanted this. Was it redemption? Not really. It was pathetic desperation, and not much else. The mission was screaming suicide, but I didn't give a damn. At least I'd die being a pain in the ass. This was it. It was almost over. So I guess I'd become what they wanted me to be. A killer. Some rent-a-clown with a gun who puts holes in other bad guys. Well, that's what they had paid for, so in the end, that's what they got. Say what you want about Americans, but we understand capitalism. You buy yourself a product and you get what you pay for. And these chumps had paid for some angry gringo without the sensibilities to know right from wrong. Here I was, about to execute this poor bastard like some dime store angel of death, and I realized they were correct. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. Tea leaders, and now 
your local forecast.